Right, so what we're going to be doing there is going to be doing ring circuit testing. So on ring circuit testing, we're going to be carrying out three steps. So you're going to be carrying out the steps one, two, and three. One being end to end. Two, we're going to be testing between our line and neutral. And three, we're going to be testing between our line and CPC. Yep. Ring circuit is basically where the cable comes out the consumer unit, goes into the sockets, works its way around in a big loop, and then doubles back onto itself. So the first step that we carry out, step one, is an end-to-end -end test to make sure that we've got continuity of the conductors flowing all the way around. So that our line, neutral and CPC go to each point and comes back onto itself. So basically you're going to have to set the meter up onto the ohmage scale, which is the orange setting that goes onto there. We're going to be using crop clips with the leads. And the first thing we need to do is know the leads. So we get rid of the resistance within the actual leads themselves. So we're going to join them together with a crop clip and just null the leads. And we know when the leads are nulled because we'll have 0.00, and we have the little symbol where we've got the round circle with the two arrows. Make sure that you null the leads at all times because otherwise you're going to pick up the resistance of the leads on the actual circuit itself and it's going to give you a false reading. So to step one, we're going to go end to end. So put your crop clips on your line conductor, just squeeze them tight and we're going to get a reading. So in this case we got 0 0.02, 0 0.03. We're going to do the neutral conductor. Just double check on our line as well because we've nulled the leads again. We'll point 0.07 on that one that time. And then we're going to do a CCC. 0.09. So the CPC is going to be slightly higher because it's a smaller conductor. We've got 2.5 on the line and the neutral and we've got 1.5 on the CPC. So we're expecting roughly around about two thirds higher or 1.67 times higher. Sometimes there can be a little bit of a diversity in your line and your neutral conductors. It purely can be a resistance within the connections that you've got on your socket outlets. Your line and your neutral need to be approximately the same. So if we're getting, we've got 0.03 and 0.07 on them, probably means that you might need to tighten up a couple of connections on that, but it would have been diversity, and as you saw, we've got 0 0.09 on your CPC, which is slightly higher. That's not too bad reading on that. We need to keep track of those results, because what we're going to do is we're going to write them onto the final ring circuit continuity column on here. We need to do two equations, which is our R1 being our line conductor, and Rn being our neutral conductor, we add them together and we divide that by four. That will give us an anticipated result for step two. When we do step two, we're going to be joining together line out to neutral in. So with that, we can use crop clips or we can just use Wago blocks, which are just as good. So we're going to join that together like that. Join that like so, and then we're going to do the opposites again. So neutral to the line conductor, like so. We can change the lead for this now. You can use an adapter, or you can use one of these leads, which is just a plug on it. We're testing between line and neutral. So we need to make sure that we use the line of neutral pins. What we're going to do is we're going to null that as well. So we've got nulling points here. So we're going to null that. That's fine. And what we're going to do is we're going to test at every point. So we're going to test there. get 
0.02. So that's our step two, which our line to neutral. Yep, mm -hmm. we all happy with that. We then jump on to step three. Now with step three, we're going to do the same equation again, but this time we're going to do R1 to R2 divided by four. So we're going to take the figure that we wrote into the line conductor, the figure that we wrote in on CPC, we're going to add them together, and we're going to divide that by four as well. We also need to make sure that we change these rounds. So what's going to happen is, is we need to make sure that that one is going to there. So we've got opposites again. So your in line goes to your out CPC and your out line goes to your in CPC. Making sure that you swap over your leads again and that needs to be nulled. The same thing again, we've got that nulled. And then same thing again, we're going to taste and test at every single point. Usually what you should find is that your line to CPC will be slightly higher because you're testing between a 2.5 and a 1.5. The 1.5 being a smaller conductor, so therefore it's going to be a higher resistance as opposed to when you do your step two, that you've got a 2.5 and a 2.5. So therefore, being a bigger conductor, your resistance is going to be lower. Therefore, you're going to have a lower reading on step two than what you've got on step three. What this actually does is one, it tells us that the sockets are wired correctly. So if we have a line and a CPC that are the wrong way round, and we just do the R1, R2 test, what's gonna happen is, is if two connections have got the wrong polarity, you're still gonna get the same reading. So when you do your test where you carry it out between line and neutral, if you have got a wrong polarity, what's gonna happen is, is that it's gonna show up because you're not gonna get a reading at all. If you get that, what you need to do is open up the actual socket itself, have a look, and you might find that you've wired it around the wrong way. The other tests that you want to be making sure that are pretty much the same, like I said on step one, if you found that you had 0.05 on a line conductor, 0.16 on a neutral conductor, they should be roughly the same. If they're not the same, then there must be an issue somewhere. Pretty much all the time, that's because you've got a connection that's a bit bad. So it's just a question of opening up all your sockets, having a look at every single socket, checking all your connections, make sure that they're all terminated properly, maybe just giving them a bit of a tighten up, and then redoing the test again. Make sure that you do know your meters every time that you carry out any of these tests. And the reason being is because on these size circuits that you're actually working on, they're quite small. So we're expecting quite small readings. So if you're out by 0.01, 0.02 on your meter, that could be the difference between you getting confused or wondering if something's right or wrong as well. So you need to make sure that you've nulled them all properly, then you carry out your step one, then you're gonna join together your line and neutral, carry out step two, making sure you've nulled your leads at the nulling point, and then you're gonna carry out step three, which is your line to CPC, making sure that you've nulled your lead at your nulling point. You need to test one socket at each twin. You don't need to test every single one. If you want to, it's not a problem. You can sometimes find that you'll get a slight difference on resistance, because it's just the resistance that you pick up within the socket itself. It's nothing to worry about. What we're concerned about is if we get very, very high readings or something that's a little bit odd. And if they are odd, then you need to start investigating from that sort of point onwards. You're all happy with that? Yeah. Yeah. Right, if you're all happy with that, then you can all crack on with your ring circuits and you can have a go at testing them.